Okay, let's take a stab at this. So, I could have turned on my camera to get the face shot, much like our boy Jared Poen does, but I am too lazy, and also it's like 10 a.m. I just woke up because I don't start work until noon today, and I'm still in my PJs. So, let's take a look. I'm just going to just go through. You have, as you can see, 29 photos here, right? I'm just going to very quickly go through them initially, pick out the ones that I think are, you know, worth giving an edit. I know you went through, this is not the whole set of the whole show. Uh, go through the ones that I think are worth giving an additional edit. Um, you know, the ones that I don't mark. It's not like I think they're bad. It's just at a very cursory glance. Um... You know, it's, it's not like they're getting deleted, right? So I, the way I would normally work is, I'll just give you an example, right? So like this photo right away, let's say I go through them, right? You know, ah, whatever, 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 whatever. I'm like, okay, I like this one. I'll just mark it as a pick. Um, using the P key, I have my, uh, my uh, PC muted, like the Windows audio, but you should be able to hear the clicky clacky from the keyboard. Um, and then I'll go through and then you can just filter um, this is how I do it, right? Everyone has their own workflow. Um, this is how I do it. I set it as rated. Um, excuse me, not rated. That's not what I wanted. Uh, flagged. That is what it is. Um, and then you can go from there, right? This is just library view. So these are normally just JPEG, um, JPEG previews of the raw files. Then you'll actually load the raw when you go into develop. Um, but we will... Uh, remove that so we can get back to the the full library and we can go through so just starting off you know you you're going at 1250 which is not a bad idea as you can see i mean there's a little there's some noise from iso 6400 but that's to be expected um and there's a little bit of motion blur so you might have maybe wanted to go up to like i was saying in, in the discord right one uh one over 400 but at that point you're getting into the the 10,000 iso range um and it's getting even on like you know the best of the best low light cameras once you go up above 6400 into the the 10 to 12,000 range things can get sketchy uh noise wise so honestly right here right if you're looking for one two fiftieth 6400 you're looking at this sort of as a whole if you're looking to post in this on instagram or something this will do nicely right so that that's not depend it's all about knowing you know if you're going to blow this up right if you're going to print this obviously you're not getting a ton of detail in here because of the noise and whatnot but if you're looking to publish this online either on instagram or on a blog like say a, a review of the show or whatever that that will do fine so it's about knowing both the client and the application so let's just go through. This is a nice shot. I would maybe have gone vertical here because you know, so you're cutting off the, the top of the guitar. Um, so like very quickly, right? What I would do here is maybe a square just so you have people centered. Um, you know, and then maybe make sure you don't cut off the top. But other than that, the composition's good. Same here, like gotta be careful to make sure you're not cutting off the top. Um, it's, don't worry about it too much. I do that shit all the time. You look at the pictures of when I went to the baseball game from like August or whatever it was that I went. And there's like shots where I got people standing on first base and like their feet are cut off, you know, at the heel. And I'm like, well, that sucks. I shouldn't have done that. So. Nice action shot. See, um, you know, a little bit of noise, but one two fiftieth was a, was enough to to freeze the action, which is what you want. Um, so that's a good shot. We'll we'll pick that one. Um, yeah, I, it looks like it back focused here, right? If you notice, out of focus, out of focus, um, in focus. Um, so yeah, just. just you know, be careful with, with where you're focusing. I don't know what focus mode you're using. I don't know if it actually says in the metadata. Probably not. Um, yeah, almost certainly not. Um, but again, like, you know, these these numbers, these settings are are more than fine for, for the application. Um, 
Same here, it looks like it. I can't tell, because this doesn't look, I mean, outside of the motion blur, which is whatever, which, like, I think for this shot almost works. Um, I, I don't know where it was focused. Maybe over here, I don't know. Um, but, you know, low light situations, it's hard for things to focus. You miss some shots, it's bound to happen, right? This is a good shot. Um, let's see if you go into it, it'll tell us a little bit, it'll be a little bit sharper. Yep, sort of nailed focus. Um, again, you know, ISO 2000 is not bad. Um, I would have maybe bumped this up, the shutter speed, just to make sure I froze all the action completely, but 250 for a relatively static scene like this is, is okay, right? There's no motion blur going on. Um, again, I would just maybe go with the 5x4 here just to, you know, you want to center your subject in this case. Uh, maybe a little bit, something like that. As you can see here, you know, a little bit more centered here, nailed the focus on the eye. Um, that's good work. Um, again, I would just maybe be careful about cutting off the guitar here, right? This is one of those ones where if it's going to yell at me because I can't actually just shift it over, right? Um, but if you have something like this, where if you cut off, say, a little bit of the end of the mic stand here, sort of use this uh, mic stand as like a natural border of the on the left-hand side of the frame and then make sure include the top of the head of the guitar. Um, but these are all things that, you know, as you get more experience, you will figure out. And I'm sure it's very tough to just be in the moment and not panic and you know, just get the shot. But obviously, you know, getting this shot, you know, looking in the direction of the camera, but cutting off the top of the guitar is better than not getting the shot at all. Uh, let me actually, let me actually pick this one. And again, if I'm not picking a shot, it's not because I don't like it. It's just because I'm trying to narrow it down to a, like the short list of the short list. This is actually a good shot. I like the, the lighting here a whole lot. Uh, same with this so and this is again same thing right cutting off the top of the base um i'm not as concerned with the feet here because very clearly the subject is is up top um it's just that this is in the general vicinity right so if you are too concerned about cutting off the feet you could just cut it short even closer and be like okay we'll just do this here um but I think, it, you know, especially when you narrow it down to this, which the reason I'm defaulting to 5 by 4 and one by one is because that's what Instagram takes. Um, obviously, you know, if you want to keep it as shot or the original um, aspect ratio, you can of 3 by 2 But, you know, uh, assuming that these are going to be used on social media, either by you or by artists or whoever, you know, these two are the, the ones that Instagram likes. If not, if, you know, if you upload something that is not in one of them, Instagram will just take the liberty of cropping it for you, which is always uh, fun. Yeah, so I would go something like this, just make sure, you know, and then scoot it over. That way you include the top of the the base. And I have the, the rule of thirds. Uh, actually, excuse me, this is not the rule of thirds. This is actually, I believe, the golden ratio. And you can just, in Lightroom, you can press the O key and it rotates through all these fun things. Like, this is the proper rule of thirds. Um but I tend to like this a little bit better for, for my work, right? Everyone's different. You know, I say work, it's a hobby. Um, this, this shot is already more pro work than, than I've done. Um, yep, this is a good shot, um, but same thing. Be careful about cutting. Actually, do I have an example here? Let's, let's go over to my, my big library. Oh, when the hell did I go to that game? Okay, it was September. Um, even if I go by flag tier. You know, something like this, right? Where it's like, man, I really like the shot, you know, got a nice smile going on everything, but like, the, especially the umpire here and the first base coach, like the feet are cut off. So after the fact, I was like, well, I'll goof that up. But, you know, just showing that everyone, everyone makes mistakes, so don't sweat it too, too much. It's, it's especially tough when shooting a live event to, to really nail that stuff in. And I understand here you're shooting at 22 mil, which was the prime, you know, so 35 mil full frame equivalent. Um, so you can't really go wider. Let's see, you had, uh, you had the 15, right? But you're not in the pit for that. Um, and also you would have been shooting that at 3.5. So you would have had to, 
to crank the ISO up uh, another couple of stops, which, I mean, you can get away with here because you're only at 2,000, right? So, but also, like, switching lenses on the fly in the pit, and I don't know about that one. Um, so, but it's a good shot. Yeah, so here is what I was saying that, like, I mean, outside of focus, because I, I, I think it focused, back focused a little bit. Um, there's a little bit of motion blur, especially in the hands, right? You could maybe crank this up to 1,400. Your ISO at that point would then go up to 3,200 or 4,000. You're not getting that much more noise. Um, actually, the noise control here, I, I've not looked at files from, from the, the EOS M cameras. Um, so th this is all new for me, but like the noise, once you get up to 64, it's a little bit iffy, but at 2,000, 2,500 here, it's actually pretty well controlled. Um, but yeah, back focused here onto the, uh, the amp stack. Um, but other than that, the composition is pretty good, right? You have, you know, your entire subject in frame with, with some context, which is why people like the 35 mil equivalent. Um, let's see. Again, yeah, it's back focused. I, I don't know whether it's the lens, whether it's the camera, whether it's a setting you had, I, I'm not sure. Um, here's a situation where if you know you're gonna be in this spot for a while, right? And you know your subject and you wanna lock focus on the face, on the eye, you could set a flexible spot and just sort of set the flexible spot you know, roughly near the top. Most cameras allow you to set either a very precise one or a bigger area that you can move around that might have been worth doing here. Um, but again, you know, learning experience, right? Um, because in terms of composition, you know, I like this shot. I would maybe, you know, I would maybe straighten it out a little bit, something like, like that. Um, maybe a little bit more without losing too much of the subject in, in the frame. Um, uh, but other than that, it's good. And then right now, I'm just going through and, and tagging them, right? We're not getting to the actual, like, all of this stuff yet. Um, forgive me for just rushing through these, but um, I like the shot. I like the backlighting. You know, this is a pretty easy one to, uh, to you know, if you want to crop it for you know, for Instagram, it'd be a pretty easy one. You just cut off a little bit of the bottom, a little bit of the top where it's mostly blank space anyway, right? And then you have a nicely isolated subject. Um, I would, I mean, obviously you're working with the lens you got. I would maybe go a little bit tighter, you know, instead of having to, for Instagram, it doesn't matter because Instagram photos are, are very low res anyway. But, you know, to get it in camera, like say if you wanted to print it, whoops, I didn't mean to straighten that. Um, I would maybe go, you know, a pretty tight shot here. That way you isolate, or, or not isolate, you'd get rid of uh, distractions around the outside of the frame, right? And you really just have your subject, just you know, it's like now it is very clear like what the subject of this photo is. Um, but again, personal taste and you're working with the gear you got. I know you said you tried to grab a, uh, a gong shot. Yeah, same thing here, right? So if it were me, uh, you can't see my hand. Um, but I'd tilt the camera down, right? That way you 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 have some empty space up top here that you can, you know, let's unlock this and go custom, right? Um, no, unlock, custom, unlock. Um, that way, you know, you get rid of sort of the blank space on top. Um, and then, you know, assuming there's more on the bottom here, you get the rest of the subject in frame, you get a little bit of the stage. And also that way, you know, the subject of this photo is, you know, essentially what's going on with the gong. And if you tilt the camera down, you, you bring that more into into the center of the frame, which the subject doesn't necessarily need to be in the center, but I think it would work for, for this. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tag this because I actually kind of like the, uh, the centering of the photo. Uh, another good shot, I think I'm focused on, yeah. Uh... It's not too bad. I'm gonna say it looks like it focused on, you know, legs and not face, but it's not too bad. Just going through quickly here. Nice crowd shot. Um, 
Yeah, if you have a wider angle, like you know, a thirty-five mil equivalent, you can you can get away with that. Um, I would maybe I don't I don't know what's behind you here, right? But I would have maybe taken another step back just to get you know an even wider sense. Um, because it does feel sort of chopped off in in places. Um, but you know, if you can't step back, you can't step back. Nothing you can do about it. Yeah, same thing. I would have maybe done this vertical, right? That way, you know, you don't really need the extra, you know, um, member here, right, for this photo to work. It's all about your main subject and the backlighting. Um, so 160 at ISO 640, um, I mean, it works here, right? So, but you got a little motion blur in the hand. Um, ISO 640 is pretty low for a low-light situation. I mean, the result mostly works. I'm not sure if that was a conscious decision you made to to lower the shutter speed to get um, a lower ISO. Um, but in this particular case, it works, right? But let's just see, you know, if we rotate this, you know, 5 by 4 um, You know, I think this, this works um, a little bit better. Um, Maybe maybe a one to one. Um, at that point, going vertical with this would be tough. Um, you know, once you sort of eliminate those distractions around the edge of the frame, I think this works a little bit better. So that is just very quickly going through the library. Uh, let's do a fancy fade down, fade up, and we will get to the actual editing. I'm probably not going to do all of them. Just maybe one or two, just to give you an idea of of sort of the general workflow. Um, and yeah. Okay, we have our our photos here. There, there's 10, is, is what I narrowed it down to. 29 to 10. Um, and from this, let's just pick uh, a couple to go through. I quite liked, uh, I quite liked these shots. Um, let's go with this one. Okay, so we head over to the develop module here. Um, we could probably do a little bit of a tighter crop, right? Uh, something like that. You know, we you have the lights in the top left here, but what you really need is the the light itself filtering in. You don't necessarily need the light source. Um, if anything, that you know, if we go back to the original here, that sort of you know causes your eye to drift from the subject over to the the bright ass thing in the corner. So we don't necessarily need that, especially if you're going for a social media. You want a five by four or a one to one. One to one is a little bit claustrophobic uh, to me. Um, so let's go a little bit wider. If you really hear the, you know, the social media gurus, they want you to do vertical because it takes up more screen real estate on someone's phone. That, 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 who cares? Um, let's try not to chop off the, uh, you know, our other camera friend here in the back. If we do, it's not the end of the world, but that caught my eye. Okay, so there's a few ways you can go about this. There's a handful of presets, you know, all of these are like Adobe ones, you can go cinematic, which like some of these look all right, I don't love what it does to the green there, um, you know, and these are ones that I've either grabbed, there's a lot of free stuff or paid stuff, you know, which your film presets, which a lot of these are really grainy, um, there's actually a, uh, you know, a Kodak one, these are like specific films, you know, your Ektachrome, some classic films, your your Portra, which is a classic one, your T-Max, you want black and white, but we're not going to do any of that. We're going to do this the old-fashioned way um, by hand. Um, I cheat a lot of the time. Well, cheat and sneer quotes. I like hitting auto here just to see what it does. Um, that is too bright, so we're going to undo that. Or what we can do is we can just use that as a starting point, right? I think if you're bringing it to auto here, it is overexposing it quite a bit. Um, so we're going to do that. I like the contrast from the shadow, so I'm actually going to bring them back down. Bring the highlights down. It is good, so we'll stick with that. Um, and if you notice... Uh, our subject here is is a little dark, but we can we can bring that out later because right now it's looking kind of flat. Uh, so we can up the contrast. Apologies if I'm having to click things a million times because my push to talk on my microphone messes with Lightroom sliders because it's like scroll lock, so that doesn't really work. 
up the contrast here. White balance seems okay, so you can press the W key and it becomes a picker for your white balance. And you can click on a neutral area and it will redo the white balance. So you can set the white balance, a darker neutral area. You know, but I, as you can see, it did not quite, it, it changed the temperature by not a lot, but it made the tint very green and we obviously don't want that. Just warming it up a little bit. I think that will. Uh, this is our before and this is our after. You can already see we brought down the highlights quite a bit. It's a little bit harsh. And I think the slightly warmer white balance works. There's a little bit of yellow going on here, right? Um, but that's something that we can fix. Either with your general, you know, hue saturation, HSL, you know, if we wanted to, we could just bring the yellow saturation down. Um, but that's global, right? So really we could work on uh, Lightroom just updated their masking. Um, but we can get to that later. Um, so I have a few presets that I have made. You know, the linear, medium contrast, strong contrast are all built-in ones. Like this is... Far too much, especially with me pumping up the contrast here. Um, but if we uh, just raise the blacks, you know, it leaves our contrast mostly alone, but it gives you a little bit of that matted black look. Um, and then what you can do from here is like, I think you're you're losing a bit too much. And I'm saying you just because it's the royal you, right? Don't think of it as you as in you personally. It's just you're losing a little bit much in the bottom here. So we can either use a um, graduated filter to bring more detail out here, or we can just raise the blacks globally and see what happens. Yeah, and you're getting a little bit back here. Raise the shadows a little bit more. Okay. What happens if we mess with the white level here? Bring them up a little bit. Bring a little bit of the harsh lighting in the back. And uh, we're looking, you know... Not bad already. See, we're already brought out more detail here. Already brought out more detail in, you know, the hair and face. Um, and killed a little bit of the, the harshness here. The colors are a little bit different. Um, that's just a, a nature of me changing the white balance. I think it looks better. Again, this is all just editing to my style and taste. Um, so obviously you might disagree. Um, if you wanted to bring this, you know, the yellows a little bit closer back to the green. You could change it in hue here, you know, and that brings us a little bit closer to where we are originally. Um, but that's just personal, personal taste. I'll leave it, I'll leave it there because I actually don't hate how it looks. Um, and then all this stuff is all fun. You got to be careful with your dehaze, your clarity, and your texture here because as you can see, if you crank it up, things get really dark, especially with clarity. Things get that really like ugh, harsh, gross, like almost HDR digital look. And it also, what Clarity does is it increases micro contrast everywhere across the frame. And you can see it's really making things pretty, pretty gnarly here. Um, so for something like this, where you have a lot of effects, meaning like, you know, there's haze, there's smoke, just part of the stage, you can actually lower the clarity. Um, and it gives you kind of a neat sort of ethereal look. Let's see. Yeah, right, a little minus 25, especially in the in the background here. Um, you know, it, it lightens up a little bit on the face, so you lose a little bit of the, the harshness and the detail there, which can be undesirable, but I think here it works. You can also undo it with a local adjustment. Um, whoops, so let's, let's maybe back off a little bit. You know, and, and let's say you want this, this lack of clarity back here for these lights, but you don't want to lose it in the face. You can then just up texture a little bit to compensate. You know, as, as I'm, I'm overdoing it here, so you can see, but um, it brings back a lot of that detail in, in the subject here, um, which if you're actually editing a portrait, a lot of times you want to remove the texture in the in the face just because uh, modern cameras and lenses are so sharp that you know if you're taking more of a proper traditional portrait it can be you know it, it shows everything let's say all of the imperfections that people are oftentimes uh 
very self-conscious about and that are undesirable in a portrait, but that's not what we're working with here, so. Okay, I think we're looking good as a general edit. You can really go buck wild if you want to go with like a, uh, like a, you know, orange and teal edit here, but I don't think that works for this particular case. Um, you can make all of the greens. So people are always asking me, not really, but you see online people asking, what is the difference between, you know, the calibration here, right? And this is getting into the weeds a little bit on how Lightroom works and HSL here, right? You have your your RGB down here, but then you also have your colors here. So this, this is changing visible colors, right? So there's not a lot of, like, let's say aquas in this frame, you know, or blues. You know, there's some blue on the guitar on the bass but that's about it um you know so changing that doesn't change much what calibration does is every pixel was made up of rgb right it's changing what those values are right this is saying like all right reds in this picture what do we want the reds to look like right reds down here it's like all right red as a third of every pixel we're changing what red is I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but I don't know. It does to me, um, just with how I, I think. Um, you know, it's very. It, this is changing what red looks like. This is changing what red is. Um, so we can actually, and the way people create a lot of like your your very sort of Instagrammy edits is by talking with calibration and colors, right? Like I actually don't hate how this looks. Um, I think you're losing a bit of the yellow, which is a shame but you could always try and bring some of it back by bringing the saturation back up in the greens but for for our purposes here i don't think it's worth messing with calibration too much um i think our our greens are actually a little bit too powerful here so we can back off the saturation here a little bit and then maybe bring the oranges up a tad to bring your uh purples up a tad um, I think actually bringing the blues down, making this closer to a pure white works. Um, you know, you can mess with stuff, make it very Christmassy if you really wanted to, but I don't think that will serve us well here. I'm trying to get as close to, not necessarily trying to color match, but you know, you can see by messing with the stuff here, we've introduced a bit of noise, um, not a ton. Um, I don't know, you, you can do noise reduction. There's a few ways to do it. You can do it in Lightroom here, right? Um, bring up your, your luminance noise reduction, which does a good job here, but then um, you're losing a little bit of, uh, of you know, detail on your subject here. So you gotta be careful with it. You can always up the, the detail, um, you know, but that's up to you. I'll leave it for now, just so you can get an idea of how it works. Um, I know there are some people that swear by noise reduction because everything must be pristine. And then there are some people that are like, no, I never do noise reduction on my photos. You know, I like the grain. I think it gives it a bit of a grit. Um, I, I think it, it really shows the moment. I, I, I personally tend to fall somewhere in the middle. Um, you know, right, what you can do is if you want to not mess with this, you can just get into masking, right? So you can do a select subject. This is new. I don't know how well it's going to work. We'll find out. Finding one moment, All right? And it did a pretty good job, right? It picked out our subject, right? So what we can do then, if we want to get rid of the noise everywhere except for on our subject, um, and this is sort of the magic of, of Lightroom here, you can take your mask um, and you can invert it. So now it has everything except our subject here. Um, and then what you can do is just turn the noise down. This setting always confused me because it says noise, but it's actually noise reduction. Um, so now you can see it has it reduced noise everywhere if we turn it off, you know, in the background, but did not touch our subject here. So masking, especially the new masking tools, which got added like a couple weeks ago, are super great. Um, and it's also a, a very cheap way to uh, create sort of a artificial uh, portrait mode effect on your phone, right? So you can just turn the sharpness down.
you know, and it blurs everything else. Um, but again, you got to be careful with overdoing that. Um, I think it actually works for, for here a little bit. Um, so, okay, create a new mask. Uh, we will select our subject again, because um, this time I want to bring out some shadow detail, right? But only in our subject. And if we want to refine it to just the face, we can do that with a radial filter. Um, so what we can do is show our overlay here and it's just our subject, right? And let's say I just want to bring out the face. We can intersect, I, I'm still learning how to use this stuff, intersect with a uh, um, radial gradient. And here it'll intersect, right? So if you show it, it'll only be our subject, right? Because we had our subject selected and it's intersecting with this radial gradient. So it'll only show, the mask here will only affect what is both part of our selected subject and our radial gradient. And then if we want to adjust feathering, we can just drag this. This shit is super neat and like I'm still getting used to everything it can do, but it's awesome. It's great and I love it. Anyway, uh, let's bring out some of the, the detail here, right? So we want to drag out a little bit of the shadows, right? Brighten up the face. Um, and along with that, we want to do a little bit of contrast. Um, we can actually drag this here, right? Um, and I think, you know, we can actually turn these these off, right? I think, if just focusing, ignoring the background, right? Just focusing on here, I think just this little subtle adjustment um, really helps bring out sort of the the focus on your subject here, right? And then what we can do is, uh, when, can we duplicate this? We can. Um, so max mask to copy. We can drag it. And now it's still doing the same thing, right? Where it's only affecting on our selected subject, but only within the radial gradients. So then what we can do is we can rotate this and elongate it and have it focus on just the the base here. I don't think we need it to be that big. Um, and let's see how that does. See, there's a little bit of noise. I don't know if I want to bring out as much shadow detail because there is a, a bit of noise here. We can do some noise reduction locally um, without you know harming too much of this part of the photo. Um, and then do a little bit. Whoop, bring out a little bit of the blacks. See, if you bring up the, the black level too much, you get that weird, you know, and that's not ideal. Um, my PC is yelling at me. It is working very hard. The fans just spun up. Something like that. Maybe reduce the contrast a little bit. Um, that's the thing. The, the new masks, while all some are very system intensive, um, and let's see if we close masking now if you press it's uh, underneath the backspace it's that um, backslash key that will show you like the the before and after this is the before this is after um, feel free to disagree but I think this works you know way better you have a little bit more focus on your subject um, you know, you have a little bit of a stylistic edit with the bringing the blacks down here and everything. And then what we can really do is if we go back to masking, we can do a new mask, do a linear gradient and bring it in from the side here. Um, and this is how you can do sort of a, a custom vignette where you can just very slightly bring the exposure down. You know, and it does it in a gradient from the side. Right, so you can see it's coming in slowly. And you can actually do, um, you know, uh, additional nonsense here. You can intersect it with a color range or a luminance range, right? Let's say you only want it to affect the really bright stuff. You know, you can see it affecting in real time where it's not touching the corner, right? It's only, it's only, bringing the exposure down in the brighter parts of what is selected. Then you can use these options to sort of feather it. 
That way you don't end up with like really, really crushed, you know, black corners. Um, and I think that, you know, I think that looks all right. Um, and then we could do another linear gradient. Now let's say you wanted to bring out a little bit more in the shadows here in the bottom, right? You could do bring out, you know, in increase the exposure. I don't think this looks good for this particular image just because this part of the frame was pretty dark to begin with. So you start bringing out too much. There's not a lot of detail there. You can see there's it, most of it's in here on the histogram. Uh, you were bringing out a lot of noise, but this is just for an example, right? So you can do the same thing. We intersect mask with uh, a luminance range. Uh, and you can then do the opposite where you only want it to affect the, the darker parts. Um, you know, here, seeing it's not affecting this stuff because it's lighter. You can do this where it shows the whole luminance mask for the whole image, but that's a bit much. Um, and then you can change how this looks, right? Just different overlays, you can do uh, image on black and white, um, white on black or image on black, image on white, so you can see only what you're affecting. I just like the color overlay, so that way you can still see the image. So now you're just bringing out the, the darkest parts of the frame. Um, I don't actually think this works for this image, but it was just as an example, so we'll delete that. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, you know, outside of maybe a little bit of additional color tweaking, right? Um, if you want to make the yellows pop a bit more, make them a little bit brighter, bring up the luminance level, but I, I don't, you know, you could, Outside of some actual like Photoshop work where, you know, you could add like a um, an Orton effect type blur to this background to really make it glow, um, you know, anywhere where there's where's that type of stuff, um, you know, outside of that. And then maybe a little bit of brush work here because, you know, this is a little bit too bright. Bring down the highlights, bring down the exposure. And then, you know, I'm overdoing it here, right? You would not want to do, you know, three quarters of a stop. And bring down that stuff just a little bit. It's kind of harsh because it's, it's clipping a little bit. Um, you know, maybe something very, very subtle like that. You could do that here, but I, I don't think it's necessary. I think most of the time people are just going to be looking at, you know, the bass guitar, the face, and and that's that's it um so that's how i would edit one of these um i could go into a, another here but i think that gives you a, a pretty good idea of of the workflow you can actually maybe add a little bit of of haze here i don't love how it looks but you know to each their own um and if you notice right you can bring out additional colors and make the the thing pop without touching these sliders so this is a these sliders are a trap right i mean if you want to pump up the vibrance you can but pumping up the saturation is a trap um you can do a lot of that work just here in the tone curve like most of the time if i'm doing a thing where i'm messing with the tone curve and i'm messing with sort of individual colors here what i'll want to do especially if i bring up vibrance a little bit because the way vibrance works is it brings out colors that are um, sort of less prominent in, in the frame. That way it sort of balances things out and makes the image pop as a whole while saturation, as you can see, does everything. You can go to black and white here. I actually think this photo would work as a black and white, but that's another thing for another day. Um, you bring it down a little bit, just a very small amount, and then you, you know, because you don't want it to be oversaturated, the criticism I have with a lot of um, like phone cameras is, is not that the photos it takes are bad, but that the processing on them, Samsung especially is bad with this, where they will oversaturate things like this. And you're just like, this doesn't look natural, right? Photography does not have to be a representation of what you saw with your eyes, but like this looks like a lot. Um, and then the last thing, you can do some cleanup if you really want. Um, you know, you can enable profile corrections here. Um, I, I don't know if I would because it removes some vignetting. 
Um, but I actually think the vignetting for this photo in particular works. Um, you can do is have it just fix uh, distortion and then just back off the vignetting fix. But uh, Adobe's cool because it has a whole bunch of uh, profiles just pulling from the metadata. Um, and then the big thing is chromatic aberration. I say big, but big for me because it annoys me. Um, but other than that, you don't really need to worry about it. You know, you can just use this thing and, oh, there's green fringing here and it'll just fix it. But in a photo with a lot of green here, you got to be careful because sometimes it'll just be like, hey, we're going to get rid of all of the greens, which is not, not what you want. Um, well, let's see if we... Yeah, because it got rid of some of the greens in the background, which are not ideal. Forgive me if it looks like it's chugging. It's because I'm recording here. And then you can do some additional cleanup um, if you really wanted to, uh, like this Band-Aid tool, right? You can just heal, heal brush stuff up, stuff out where it will just sort of get rid of that. Um, but other than that, you know, this is where we started. This is where we're at. Um, these Canon files are pretty good. Um, they're uh, not super flat raw. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me how the raw look. Some raw files uh, look sort of like log video where they're very, very flat. They look almost like they got a gray filter on top of them. Um, these aren't that. They're pretty good at a camera, um, as you can see here. But it's more about just like bringing detail out, right? Bringing back, you know, this looks kind of unnatural right it looks sort of washed out bringing back a little bit of those natural skin tones a little bit more color in the face in the hair um and then just sort of using manipulating light and shadow and color to to isolate your subject right if you really wanted to isolate your subject i don't think it works for this particular photo right but if you really wanted to isolate your subject here you could even tone down the saturation in the background and really just have this is an extreme example right but really just have you know more color on your your subject here but i don't think that works for this i think the green it really is is crucial to the mood of the photo but it's something you could do right if, if you wanted to go that direction so uh hopefully this helped i realized looking at the two video files that it's actually like 45 minutes worth of stuff uh and it's a lot of information but hopefully it helped i would maybe do a little bit more like this purple here is a little bit distracting in the corner so if you wanted to you could you know just clone that out and it will grab you can adjust it you know let's say you just want plain black there right you could do that um so that's not a distraction in the frame I'm not one to add stuff to my photos, but I think removing stuff like that is fine. Obviously, everyone's line, where they draw the line, will be in a different place. Um, but that's where I draw mine. Um, and then from here, you should just be able to, to export it. And I think, you know, I think a, a client would be quite happy with this photo. Um, obviously, it depends on the client, but, you know, you can go from there. So, yeah, hopefully this helped. And uh, if you want me to go through any more of these photos, just uh, just let me know, and I'd be happy to do so. I, I almost enjoy editing more than more than I do getting the shot, which is maybe a little weird, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, good work. Um, hopefully, you know, you can send some of these off to them, and they're happy with it, and you can sort of start building a portfolio and do this as a either as a hobby or just as a, a, a side gig. You know, I'm very much the not to get all philosophical, that not every hobby needs to be a side hustle, but if that's something you're interested in, you know, more power to you. So yeah, good work, and uh, yeah, just let me know.